Hello everyone. Welcome to Good Ideas, Good Thoughts. Today we have a guest and I'll be interviewing her. She's an occupational therapist registered here in the Philippines. She's a traveling OT and she's a certified SI practitioner by God's grace. Let us welcome Pauline Mild Faith R. Tuniakao, OTRP, certified USC SI therapist, also known as and very popular to her clients as OT Mai. Hi, OT Mai. Hello. Hi, Abby. <laughs> How are you? Um, great. Okay lang, and maybe it's because during this pandemic, mas um, madami tayong time ngayon. <laughs> <laughs> time for self. <laughs> yes, for especially self. for um, self-care. <laughs> yes, true, true. Madami na tayong time for self-care at saka relaxation. <laughs> Ayun, yes. So, Thank you, Otimai, for accepting my invitation. So, yun. Um, do you still have work despite of the situation? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, um, I started with teletherapy and then eventually we opt for home visits. But before pa kasi nag-start yung pandemic, um, I have been doing teletherapy na talaga. Oh, so, nice. I was really happy when everyone started to do it. Like, yes. finally, it's been normalized here in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah and, and it's very accessible to all who has internet connection. <laughs> yes. yes. So, you and praise God, we have work despite of the pandemic. So now, Otimai, I've prepared several questions related to you being a certified USCSI therapist. So are you ready? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you're ready. <laughs> okay. So number one, when did you acquire that uh, certification? Um, so actually, I enrolled in this course last March 2019. Oh, and yes, yeah, so last year lang, and I've completed it around December oh. 2019 on the same year, and yun. So I am still st uh, starting as an SI practitioner, but. Um, I have been in the pediatric setting for three years already and counting. Yay! Yay. Yeah. How many seminars did it took you to get that certification? Yun, um, actually, this is a continuing education certificate program from... University of Southern California, California, which was hosted by Dynamic. Oh, sa Cebu, yung Dynamic Pediatric um, Incorporated. So for sure, Cebu. it's very so costly. They were the, uh, <laughs> you would say, but uh, worth it, naman, kasi oh, worth, um, yeah. I believe that it's very useful, especially. Sa cases natin here in the Philippines. Yes. Very true. So it's very worth it, even it's very pricey. So, <laughs> and pesos, yeah. <laughs> um, for you, what is sensory integration in your own words? Um... By sensory integration, um, I would I would be really <laughs> a novice if I would say that I would have my own description because um, I really really look up to Gene Ayers. So basically, 
with the sensory integration as the neurological process that organizes sensations, I would have to give the credit to Jean Ayers talaga. But rather than with the definition, um, I would term it in a metaphor. So I see sensory integration same with a tree wherein madami siyang parts and you wouldn't miss one part of it dahil um, hindi magiging nourished yung tree without its parts. So, it's interconnected and it's the same basically like a tree. <laughs> nice metaphor. Tree. Uh-oh. It's like a tree. To explain it clearer to the parents. Yes. So nice. So number um next question number 4. Can you explain exterosen interosenses? What are the significance of this in our body? So both exterosenses and interosenses are under sensation. Before we can clearly talk about exteroception and interoception, we need to know the definition of sensory system. So your sensory system composes of the sensory receptors that perceives the environmental signals. So Ano ba itong mga environmental signals? Ito yung mga tinatawag nating stimuli. So, these stimuli are your sensations. So, when you say sensations, it has two categories, which are your exteroception and intero. So, ang difference lang nilang dalawa is extero comes from the outside world and then intero comes within the body. But both are sensations and both are cues. So, ang example nito is under interoception, ito yung when we feel fullness after eating a meal. Or pag kumain tayo ng adobo <laughs> na sobrang madaming mantika and we started to feel like, ah, uh, and then we started to feel like gagging. So, that feeling of gagging is your interoception, whereas your exteroception are from your sight, sound. So, yung mga um, what you hear, what you see, those are your exteroception. And seguro, for me lang, ang importance nung dalawa is we go back to the significance of being safe or safety. Kasi some of kids who have sensory processing problem, they have problems in regards to safety. They don't know that what they are doing are already hindering their safety. Like some of them would consistently run around without looking from or without knowing na nababangga na pala sila sa wall or um, there are posts na hindi nila namamalayan kaya there are other kids na may mga pasa sila or bruises because yun, it has something, it might be or the probability would be yung problem niya is from sensory processing na problem. Yes. So with those those would be really important with the regards of safety nung bata ka. Mm-hmm. And then of course, yes, making sense of life then. Kasi if you can't use your senses, how can you live life worth <laughs> oh, <laughs> worth it? True. <laughs> Other kids um, now, they're banging their head. No? Yes. It, so, as if there no might be yung feel nila. Yeah, so there might be problems with the sensory processing or it could also be problems with 
their behavior. So, actually, we just can't uh, say or hypothesize na sensory lang yung problem ng bata. Kaya nga, may evaluation tayo OT so that we yes. will know if sensory ba talaga or sensory processing ba or would it be has something to do with environmental factors or um, is it personality factor or characteristic or yung environment mismo or yun um, with the coping or executive function so um, you can't just give an SI management alone sa bata you can actually use lots of theories lots of different techniques and strategies but um famous lang talaga yung sensory uh, integration theory ni Gene Ayers kasi nga um it has been proven and ang dami na talagang evidence based practices yes true true so we learned something from exterior senses and interior senses today so, yun. so now, can you explain to us what is sensory defensiveness, sensory sensitivity, and sensory seeking? So, from those um, different terms, they are from the dance model, right? Yes. <laughs> I think they're, they're from the dance model. So, what I've learned is sobrang general and sobrang fake nung dance model. But mm. we thank Sir Don for <laughs> um, creating it because it has made sense somehow with um, the, the SI theory. Yes. But with Jin Ayers kasi, sobrang mas specific pa yung binigay niya ng mga categories, yes. which is why the course was built. So, with that, if we are going to talk about sensory defensiveness, sensitivity, seeking, avoiding, and low registration, yes. um, those terms, they are actually interconnected. <laughs> so, di ba, uh, we've learned nung college na ito, iba to. Ito, ito iba din. Different. So, when we started, um, not really in a sense na as one, but they are different. Yes, depending on the threshold. But, if you discuss it in a way na yun yung magiging categorization mo, Sobrang general niya. Kasi in, in one um, symptom like or in one term like sensory seeking, ang daming sensor, uh, senses sa uh, sensory seeking. It could be yes. vestibular, it could be auditory, and then it could be tactile, proprioception. So um, with those senses, it's clumped up in one term, which is sensory seeking. So, um, how can you really determine it from the other, from the other? So, um, nakikita mo sobrang big niya. Mm-hmm. Kaya tayo nung nagpractice tayo, sobrang nahirapan tayo. No. <laughs> sobrang nahirapan tayo to um to differentiate. Yes, and understand kasi when we started to do clinical work, but yung presentation ng bata, the same with this one and with this bracket, and then ganito ganyan. So, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure how it is taught right now by the professors, by our dear professors, but siguro um, it would be beneficial if the students are being taught by an SI practitioner. Yes. Maganda yung nagi nagi invite sila ng SI practitioner. Sana invite ka. To... <laughs> yes. Sa ano natin sa alma mater so, natin. Uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so 
para um, to really explain it in depth. Yes. Kasi yung ter- different terms na yon, it took us different courses to really understand it. So by by talking about it in one sitting would be hilarious. <laughs> Kasi um, ang dami niyang under. Yes. Parang sa isang ano pa lang ang dami ng senses. So you really have to tackle it from sure. one to the other to really know or in depthly know about it. Pero with this interview, at least it would gain it would gain knowledge to other students, OT students yes. and practitioners na yung done model is actually very general and very basic. Very so, and then you really have to have an SI practitioner to have the clinical eye to see kung ano pa talaga yung problem ni kid. Because that's what we are here for. We try to see or we try to know and find out kung ano yung mga possible senses na naghihinder sa bata to really do his occupation, which is yes. play. True, true. So they can perform well in their daily activities. Yes, mga presentations. Presentation. So actually, um, kids with autism, not all, but most of them have sensory processing problem and kids with ADHD or kids with um, delays, CP, ID, and even typical kids. So, we say yung kids na um, undiagnosed or wala namang diagnosis, okay lang sila, they're living uh, um, the typical life. Yes. They call them typical kids. They can perform, but um, meron pa rin silang mga konting sensory processing difficulties. Yun. So kahit kids na go, kids who are going to school or kids who are playing right now, they can also present with sensory processing as long as um, you could see certain delays. And then you do your screening and your evaluation with them in regards with the sensory integration, then you will know that they can benefit from an SI management or an SI practitioner. And ang na, ang na, ano ko lang ngayon sa practice ko, I am, I am so shocked. <laughs> shocked siguro kasi. Uh, before, I would think, ah, normal lang yan, okay lang. But eventually, as I see kids playing nowadays, like nowadays, huh? yes. with all the gadgets and um, television non-stop without social interaction and without playing with other kids, mm-hmm. um, nagkakaroon sila ng mga sensory processing difficulties. Yes. Even if yung mga kakilala ko na may mga anak na um, as I see them play, sabi ko, um, hindi pa pala niya marunong mag-jump ng ano, um, bed or trampoline or naka all fours pa ba siya? So, I could say na halos lahat nagkaka-delays sa developmental because of, milestone. Because of gadgets, yes. using gadgets. I think, I think so, kasi pag tinanong ko, ano naman ginagawa niya? yung ginagawa lang nila nakagadget or television so wala na yung gross motor na play wala na din yung habulan sa labas and with that yan kasi mainly yung ginagawa ng kids wherein <laughs> nagmamature yung senses nila so what happened or what happens is if they don't try to play or if they don't do those kinds of play, na delay yung um, milestones nila and at the same time, nagkakaroon sila ng mga sensory processing problems like others become picky at 
holding toys or um, there are certain textures lang na kaya nilang hawakan kasi yung iba hindi nila kaya they they go to fits and tantrums mm-hmm. so ayun yun lang yun lang naman yung um, napansin ko recently na ang dami pa lang ang dami pa lang tao ang pwede magka-sense Yes, kasi hindi hindi na you can't really tell that it's a disorder right away. It's a sensory processing disorder, SPD. Um others start magsa-start talaga yan or some would start sensory processing difficulties. Mm-hmm. So from there, um as early as we can detect them, it would be better kasi halos um, lahat ng researches na nagpo-point to early intervention ang ganda ng labas ng um, baby improvement ng kid eh. so yes so early intervention is a must talaga no? kaagad dapat malipin yes <laughs> So far, ngayon, <laughs> um, ang pinaka ginagamit ko or yung pinaka best friend ko are the bubbles. <laughs> hey, bubbles. <laughs> yes, but actually, when when you say um, calming and alerting activities, it's actually a case-to-case basis. Kasi pag sinabi mo kasi like bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles could be alerting to other kids. Yes. And then it could also be calming to other kids. Yes. Kaya, um, ang hirap, ang hirap i-categorize ng activities into certain um, calming and alerting kung um, yung kid naman is iba yung response niya with the activity. So, what am I trying to say is that you just can't clump activities into one category or do standard protocol of activities to certain kind of conditions. Because as human as we are, we are unique. And I have I have this kid na yung calming sa kanya is bubbles. But when this another kid came, para sa kanya, sobrang alerting ng bubbles. Like, tumatakbo talaga siya everywhere. Palayo yung bubbles. Gusto niyang, ano yun, no? Gusto niyang i- i- ano yung bubbles. Ano tayong pabukuhin? Um, yun, yun yung may gusto. Ah, Pero yung okay. sa ayaw, the moment na nag-touch yung bubbles sa kamay niya, <laughs> umiyak na siya. Ah, so, okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, so again, um, that we can hypothesize or we can say that it's a probability of a sensory processing problem. Mm-hmm. But again, if you're gonna ask me how how do I know that or when can we know that, you have to really have the kids see an SI practitioner. Because yeah. um, we are trained, we do we do the evaluation we evaluate what are the problems of the kid we try to see kung ano yung mga i-rule out na may na senses na ito yung nagiging problem ito yung nagiging um, reason or ito yung concern ito naman yung hindi so basically when we are being asked how do we know that so we would just say na we need an SI practitioner needs to see the kid. Okay, so there are a lot of assessment tools and there are also a lot of questionnaires. Like make my ma questionnaires, you have also both standardized and non-standardized na mga tools. And currently, ang ginagamit ko, kasi depende din yan sa mga kids na may evaluate mo eh. But so far, I have been using Beery, yung VMI, 
and then I'm also using yung SPB na um, questionnaire um, and then at the same time I also use yung PBMS and then yung bot hello <laughs> Bot, yung bot two. Uh-uh. Bot. Ayun, so, ano yung VMI? Visual, motor. Visual. Yung, yung Beery VMI from Pearson Assessments. Yung visual motor integration. Yung sensory profile, gumagamit ka ba nun? Yes. So, y- yun yung, lang na- yung nakita ko <laughs> during my practice. Uh, can oh. we use that one even if we're not certified SI practitioner? Yung, yung alin? Alin doon? Sensory profile. With the sensory profile, Kasi it has um, a categorization. If if you if you would try to search on it, meron kasi dolong categorization if you are on level A, B, C, and mm-hmm. with us OTs. So we can use that one if we're in the category. And yes, but um, it would be best kung, for example, you will be trained then with someone who really knows how to um, administer it. Kasi, iba din pag may mentor ka talaga eh. So, I guess what I would suggest is have someone or have a mentor who have an experience on doing it para at least um, they could uh, train you or they could also share their knowledge sa pag-administer ng evaluation tool kasi um, we are not alone <laughs> so we can we can always have that mentor who can teach us like may ibang centers din naman na who are using evaluation tool so um, it's a good a good environment for professional growth and to know how to administer evaluation tools. But basically, we licensed OT should be practicing how to administer your standardized and non-standardized uh, um, evaluation tools. So, start tayo dun sa una, um, with the massage. So, um, the only management na alam ko with the certification of using massage as part of the management or technique is yung CPMT. Um, that's a certification. A certified pediatric massage therapist course. So it's actually a course, and um, you, I think, meron nito eh, last year lang ata around January. It was um, available here in the Philippines, but limited slot lang. So that was the only kind of certification course I am aware of that has evidence-based when it comes to massage. So they teach you different kinds of massage techniques to calm down kids and um, to improve their attention, concentration. And then at the same time, they also have courses specifically for CDs. But Yung sinasabi, I think what you are trying to um, ask is yung sinasabi na massage, di ba, na part ng sensory integration. <laughs> so, actually, there is no such thing as, again, um, 
a standard or protocol series of activities under sensory integration management because um, remember as OTs we need to give occupation based management and it should be um, client centered but aside from that na na learn ko din na hindi lang pala client centered ang ang meron there's also what we call um yung family centered wherein everyone is being involved so um with that i don't think na <laughs> kasi yung massage sobrang passive niya kasi when it comes to sensory integration management the kid should be um, active so yung gumagawa ng activity more on of yung therapist or yung parent with the massage unless siguro kung si kid yung gumagawa ng massage sa self niya well in that case kung hindi kahit um, I don't think it would um, it would highly benefit him. But um, I would suggest to think of other creative ways to help the kid calm down. Kasi um, I, mostly ata ginagamit yung massage para makalm down si kid. So, to know more about that one, um, I think it would be best to invite a CPMT. <laughs> so I know one. I know one CPM uh, a therapist who is also a CPMT. Pero andun na siya sa US ngayon. So um, flex ko lang si Miss uh, Melody Hondonero. She is actually a CPMT, and. Um, Yun. You can you can ask her, but I think madami kang matutunan from her with the massage. So with next is the sensory brush. So I have learned dun sa course namin na walang recent um, researches proving that sensory brush is an effective tool for sensory integration. I thought so, the evidence based. Um, wala. wala but with the Will Borders, kasi stand up na siya eh. Hindi na, hindi na, hindi na sila nagbigay na courses or certification courses with it. And that is something that we also need to um, question. And research on but meron din namang benefit ang sensory brush but maybe I won't use it as something na I would consistently brush the kid even if the kid is crying <laughs> so um, para sa akin there might be something that the therapist uh, would need to try to look into ulit or will try to reassess what is happening. Why is the kid crying when I brush him? <laughs> Kasi um, crying is something that kids won't do if they play. <laughs> if they play, they need to uh, they laugh. <laughs> That's when, when you know that the play is fun, creative, and then it's very motivating for them. And kawawa si kid kung nagka-cry lang siya well we brush them. And it might be very traumatic to the kid. So, but I mean, that's fine kasi um, I, I mean, being traumatic is not fine. But with the brushing technique, I think yan kasi yung unang natutunan ng mga OTs eh. Way, yes. way back Sabi nga nila that so, there are certain brush jobs, one, two, three, five, certain experience. Or, experience. Seguro, if, if they know, if they know um, anything about it, I would uh, gladly uh, read 
about the journal or yung evidence-based na practice na kung saan nakuha nila yung information. That would be great. It would mean na, yes, we, we can use it. <laughs> Pero siguro kung at the moment, we also need to see what date lumabas din yung um, practice na yun. Kasi baka around 1990s pa yun nun. <laughs> so, Kapag ang tagal na nun. Yes, and siguro that is something that is an eye-opener to the OT, uh, Filipino OTs. They could actually research about it kung gusto din nila to see the effectiveness. But, yun, um, sobrang little information lang ang ang alam natin. Like for me, I haven't encountered any journal with a yung evi- uh, any evidence-based na journal with the sensory brush. So, um, ngayon, I don't actually use it unless I use it as a tool for play. Like, um, magpapetan play ka. <laughs> but, yes, or, or, or cleaning, cleaning, cleaning a part of your body. Yes. Pero yung tinatawag natin before na um, ganun talaga yes, with the up oh, and down oh. from um, maybe they need to recheck again their re, uh, their source their sources about it just to make sure na meron talaga itong evidence na nagtuturo na it's really helping kids improve. But unless if the kid is crying, <laughs> um, let's try to think of other creative ways to help the kid calm down or improve yung attention and concentration niya. So it's a good to know that I know mga ganito pala yung mga evidence-based ngayon. <laughs> oh, during, oh. Our, I know, during our college days, all we know that it's I know it's very useful. Pero uh, before ha, I I I used sensory brush. I also used massage. Because when I when I see when I do it to the kid, they calm down, and I mean that's good. If if, if it helps the kid calm down, then you, you can use it. But kung mag umiyak naman yung kid, then maybe you have to reassess again. What is happening? Why is he crying? So yun. you. And we use deep pressure massage. Me, I use deep pressure massage, and I can sense that the kid is somewhat being calm. Yon. Kaya sinasabi ko na um, when you ask me about calm, uh, calming activities and alerting activities, it was really hard for me, like. Am I just gonna list down different activities? Kasi, pwede rin naman yung bubbles dito sa alerting. Pwede din siya maging calming. So, sabi ko, hmm, kailangan talaga case-to-case basis siya eh. And you really have to know the kid well. And then, at the same time, um, yun, with the massage, tinu- um, tinuro actually sa akin yan, nung kakilala ko, yung deep pressure, pressure massage, it is under... Um, CPMT. Yun. You can use the pressure massage. But you, know, massage you have to... Yes, yeah, CPMT. <laughs> and then you have to know kung para saan mo ginagawa yun. Like, um, are you using it for for what goal? <laughs> and then, are you using it for what kind of occupation-based goal? Yun talaga palagi. Always make sure that your activity should be occupation based. Yes, occupation based. Because Yes, because occupation based. Yan yung yan yung work natin eh. That's what we do. It's occupation based. So lahat sa dapat na activities natin should be occupation based. So if it's that yeah. Their main occupation is play, so you have to play, 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 play. <laughs> so, Especially with early intervention. Yes. So if if the kid is having tantrums, 
So, so to make him attentive and concentrate on the task, it will give him pressure. And when he's calm, go to his occupation to play. Um, as an SI. Yes, yes. As an SI. Practitioner or as a general OT? <laughs> um, maybe both. Because <laughs> <laughs> pag um ganun, again, massage is a bit passive. Yes, yes. What if the time comes na nagtantrum siya tapos wala ka? Sinong magmamassage sa kanya? <laughs> or how can he manage it? So, you have to go back to the reason why is he having a tantrum? Bakit? Why? And then um, from there ako kasi as an OT I always ask myself why? Why is he crying? Or why is he saying banana, banana, banana? I always try to look the root cause. Diba nga sabi ko um, I see SI like a tree. So, hindi mamumunga yung puno kung hindi maayos yung roots niya. So, I always try to think and look for the deeper cause kung bakit ganun yung bata. And from there, yun yung target ko. Hindi yung tantrum niya. I'm gonna target why is he having a tantrum? So, yung magiging answer ko sa why, yun actually yung ita-target ko through play. Kasi, um, ewan ko, but upon doing it, mas nagiging, mas, mas nag-i-improve yung bata, and then at the same time, long-term effect. <laughs> yes, true. You have, you have to know the cost. Kasi, if you keep on targeting tantrum, 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 Yung tantrum lang yun na target mo. But if there are other skills na um, impeded, kasi ganito ganyan, tapos hindi mo na target. So babalik pa rin si tantrum. Important to kaya, address. Kaya lahat ng SI practitioner, after treating a whole day session, tulog talaga. <laughs> kasi so, we are continuous. Yes, because we are continuously thinking about um, the condition and we're also thinking about the kid at that time. And at the same time, ano yung activities na mabibigay namin sa kanila na nata-target lahat ng goal. Kasi um, there are also other practitioners who would say na ISI, hinahayaan lang ang bata. Yung bata dapat ang um, um, magiging, skills. Um, bata mismo ang um, magsasabi kung ano yung kailangan niya gawin, ano yung gusto niya gawin, um, hahayaan lang ang bata to play on it, uh, to, to choose the activity on his own. I mean, galing ka kasi yan sa turn na child's lead play, so dapat yung bata yung mag-lead sa play. But actually, hindi naman talaga namin hinahayaan yung kid. We actually let the kid um, choose what he what he wants, like what toy, and then from there, we need to make an activity. Kasi, um, it's something na motivating sa kanya eh. Pero some therapists would not opt to do that. Kasi, it's very, very, um, seguro, iba sa kanila. It's, it's a bit different. And, think about it na ganun ang situation for the rest of the kids. So, sobrang madidrain ka talaga. Kasi you have to think of a creative way to target the goal using the toy that the kid wants. And you have to do the activity and play. <laughs> So, continuously nag analyze ka kung anong activity ang gagawin mo all throughout the session. Play yung magiging certified SI practitioner yung continuously thinking. Yes, from, from, the ver- the, 
from the moment na pumasok yung bata hanggang sa umuwi <laughs> nagtitake na about it. Grabe. Yes. <laughs> Grabe. <laughs> oh, yun. Pero oh. ang ganda niya kasi um dun mas naaamis ako ngayon sa mga na-handle ko na kids kasi dun mo nakikita na may improvement agad eh. And dun mo makikita na um, nag-work yung management mo sa kanila. Ayun. So, I learned something today. Thank you, Maya. Thank you for the wonderful explanation about um, SI and about being an SI practitioner. So, I hope yes. our viewers will learn also from this video. So, can you um, invite them to your OT page to know more ah, about yes. So, um, I have this otmile.co. It's my Facebook page wherein um, it's basically more for the different therapists. Um, we have different merchandises but at the moment um, dahil nga pandemic naka-halt po na kami but it's a good um, page that you can visit to kasi doon ako naglalagay din minsan ng mga resources and you, they can also add me in my Facebook um, they can search OTMI so meron akong Facebook wherein the parents could add me up and then they could look on the post that I have posted because um, some of them are resources that are very helpful for parents na may mga kids struggling with their um, sensory processing problems. Yeah. So I will put also the link below so they can uh -oh. search for uh, <laughs> your own page and FB Ayun. So, yeah. next time, I will interview again Oti Mai for another topic about meeting a, a traveling OT. So, that's an exciting topic. <laughs> I want to know more what's the life of a uh, traveling OT. I know it's hard. No? It's hard traveling from one place to another, you know, treating clients, different clients. So, to know more about being an OT uh, or traveling OT, so watch out for the coming video. So, yun. So, thank you, OT Mai. Uh, I hope you Welcome. see you again soon. Bye. Yes, ikaw din, Miss Abby. And um, hopefully, with this, we can help the parents to learn more about occupational therapy about sensory integration and then about teletherapy i mean there's so much more with teletherapy and they really need to explore it with their therapists so if my therapist na sila and then they are offering teletherapy they should try to look into it kasi ang ganda niya talaga I swear <laughs> I hope they could try it too. Yung mga iba na hindi pa nakaka-try. So, ayun. Yes. So, thank you again. Okay, bye.